This time around, that guy got free time, and we've seen what happens when Saberlight starts feeling himself, you know? Yeah. When he starts getting excited about the game, he tends to pop up very, very hard. So I'd love to see more activity out here from Betboom. Start to play faster, get, get a lot more coming along here with GPK on the mid monkey. It's going to be an interesting matchup up against the Pango. I think that is a lane that is fairly manageable for Monkey. At the same time, Pangolier doesn't care about it too much. And again, off his output being physical now, Blightstone timing in lane just feels pretty rough. Although, at the least, the Monkey King does have decent enough starting armor that you're not going to be completely shoved away. Again, you can kind of play with your melee range in this matchup, at least. Yeah, absolutely. And you're glad to see that the hero puddle has increased as well mm. for GP. Yeah, slowly but surely, the, it is sprinkling here and the puddles are increasing. I mean, he could have played Puck. <laughs> it was still there. Moving in. The Step in. They'll move into Insania. Insania will just back his way up. It's okay. It is probably going to be a 2 for 2 anyway. Saberlight going to be able to secure the second as Nightfall. It did try for a Chaos Bolt, but doesn't really have the opportunity to steal away his hips fly out already from both sides. Good to see they're both still in very good spirits. Yeah, you know, Saberlight just getting God's Rebuke off, gets tips, it's fine, you know. He's, he's a very chill guy, maybe trying to get into your heads, but I don't think he's going to mind too much. Whilst we do take a look at that mid lane, GPK on that Monkey King, Nisha on the Pangolier once more. And this lane can get pretty nice for GPK if he does decide to push it a lot more. Play around with the Jingu, start to harass out Nisha. It is still not a bad lane for Pango, though. Again, this is something with the Pangolier that, frankly, has carried over for so many patches now. This, this hero just never sucks at mid. GPK pretending to be a, a creep there for a moment. <laughs> Always good to see. Uh, certainly feels like GPK should have a pretty big advantage here in the mid lane, but we shall see. Because Nisha, in the last game around versus the Puck, he obviously had a very good time. But GPK kind of told his team, like, listen, I, I don't want the Puck again. Just give me something a little bit more dominant. Still, top lane. We will have a look at save here on the Pugna, along with Insania and Mike and, of course, Pure. What are you thinking about this top? I, I feel like we've almost seen this before. As they do jump in for a double hoop stop, not going to amount to too much. In fact, Pure going to take a fair bit of damage on the way up. This is, a, this is a scary lane once you get Decrep up. And, you know, you start getting the levels and double edge. It is a lot of burst damage. I just don't know if you're going to be wanting to walk up to a life slur all too often down line, down bot. Yeah, it's a lot of damage being dealt to Toronto. We'll be just fine. It's still level one mark. Was there for Saberlight and Boxy. Actually, maybe next time they can try to secure the kill. Nightfall, gonna get hexed up there. I'm gonna try and make the jump in. The Rift, though, is not gonna be within range here for Boxy. And Boxy, let's put their hand up and wave them a goodbye. Yeah, maybe a bit optimistic, really quick onto the hex there for Boxy. Of course, that forces Line into a 1 1 build without the mana drain. You're not gonna be able to trade too much without that sustainable mana. Maybe a 1 1 1 build corrects, but then your damage output with Earth Spike doesn't feel as great. So it, and that's a little bit of a win for Bethlehem there. On top lane, Mickey. That is a lot of damage being dealt towards the lifesteal, and Mickey is gone. Pure, once again, able to secure first blood at the top lane. Sets a good tone. Bat boom. Just playing with that outstanding amount of magic damage that you have on hand. Life story, sure, you have rage. You don't want to level it in lane so early. It doesn't do nearly enough for you in comparison to your passives and just farming up. And mind you, this is save without decrep. That's just the net reward being dropped to prevent the spell spam. Once you amplify the damage, things go southbound very fast for any sort of matchup there. The burst damage is just insane. And that's going to lead to that faster ring of health timing as well here for Pure, so he's going to hit that same point of sustainability, provide some space for save to start working his way around the map. And Pugna, not the best to rotate around, but there is some room for it if you find some some opportunities to do so, or at least get a push out at some point. Absolutely. Now, 1-0. to Has been a lot of aggression from these side lanes. No kills coming out after that initial one we did see. It looks like Nisha mid lane. Also getting quite low himself in the Pango, but that was to be expected, considering you are up against the Monkey King as a Pango. The GPK really trying to abuse this matchup quite a lot, and Anisha's only at 7 CS compared to the 20 and 10 of GPK. I'm not sure if I was quite expecting it to be this one-sided, but of course, the, the hero matchup is certainly not very favorable for Anisha. No, certainly not. And if you're getting the most out of it for GPK, He's got a really stable hold on the mid. He's going to have really good water room control as well. But the supports tied into their side lanes, I mean, you're going to have a good time. The monkey's just going to be able to deny off one or grab one away. Nisha, he is inching towards the Blightstone, or at least the boots to kind of increase that spacing between him and the monkey. 
But as long as these supports are tied in, again, just kind of going back to line not having drain to sustain and just not being able to leave this life so we're alone, the mid lane matchup for GPK will just constantly snowball further and further away. Top lane, Chase is on again, Pure trying to get aggressive. Save, trying to get within range to help out. Pure not going to actually throw out the hoof stomp though. Does the side better of it instead, still chasing down Mike. Perhaps that's why he holds out. He wants to see if he had a chance at the life for his bottom lane. Nightfall going to get away, but however, Toronto Tokyo barely going to survive. We'll make it out, but my god, this bottom lane getting a little bit scary here for Beppu. And they're both trading really hard. Saberlight isn't the healthiest here as well. and doesn't quite have the mana to try to clear out. It does feel maybe a little bit more sustainable for Nightfall, just trying to play with Chaos Strike. Some region oh, on hand. Okay. Oh, you are a little bit off the mark there with the hoof stomp, but he is... He is making it just as hard for Mikke here at this top lane. Like they both off lanes are making it as challenging as humanly possible here for the carries. And very least, the life stealer is still having a much, much better time. But it just does not feel very comfortable. No, it doesn't. I, it, it's important for the life stealer to have a little bit of a better time in terms of CS. You always have this fallback here for Nightfall to play in the jungle, play with Phantasm. No pressure to get too much out from lane. You can always recover quite fast on the CK. A rather static time. Like no one's able to really rotate. You're stuck in your side lanes, which it does feel maybe marginally better here for the side of Betten, purely because you're getting more for GPK. Like this monkey's timings are gonna be on point. Orb Corrosion already up with a rework with the healing reduction on hand. Power Tread's not too far off. You've got the option for the Echo Saber down line. Uh, GPK has a lot of room to start playing once he gets some of these initial items up. He can just rotate elsewhere and get that activity going. Oh, save. Oh, gets caught okay. out mid lane. Does get the fairy fire off, but it won't matter. Still, GPK, he's trying to get some damage off of Dinsania. With a nice boundless, he will trade. Not bad whatsoever. <laughs> GPK still establishing dominance here in the mid lane against Nisha, just forcing him away. It's kind of the thing. You get a kill onto save, but it doesn't really mean that Nisha can farm. Yeah, it's... It's, it's a much needed kill to find, at the least, but not enough to really offset this lane. They even still have to keep Boxy around as well. At least there's a bottle refill for Nisha to play with. And he does have his brown boots up, so he can kind of run away a little bit, disengage better from GPK. But again, you're having a great time in Monkey. No pressure there, even with the supports. You freed up the side lanes for just a moment for Bethlehem. Allows them to farm up even further. And pure Vanguard already up. He has nothing to be scared of. He can just always run up to Mika and trade back with the double edge, and he doesn't care. Absolutely. You are still having a great old time. Mika, though, not too concerned by it. Mid lane, GPK will get jumped. Nisha, he's got the Rolling Thunder, and they will commit for this. There can be TPs to come in by the T1 tower, but they don't have the damage anyway. They really tone as insane here. We'll get jumped down by GPK. GPK getting rather aggressive. Nisha will be able to help out just a little bit, but now the balance does come out. But they are having so much trouble dealing with the monkey kick. Yeah, it's just too much. The output's not quite there in the pango. That defusal timing's not there. I mean, you, you don't even have that light stone. BK may get pinted in. Toronto Tokyo is also around the top lane, so they want to dive. The tier one tower. Rage is out, and now the double oh earth spike. Boxy, he saves the day. Is Mickey's going to be able to get out? Pure the one to go down. Perfect earth spike here from the lion. That was just set up for them. They had such a perfect start as well. Phantoms and Brace flying out, but just the timeliest rage from Mike, allowing him to turn around and get that cleanup. A lot of resources expended top. Like, again, you're, you're dragging all of this to try to pressure out this lifestealer of Mike. He gets to live. You're giving room out for Saberlight to just play the solo lane up against your CK. And again, Nightfall, he can catch up, but this is still not... A, it's not a good start Radiance for your CK Middle when Tower you're, you're kind of behind the lane, which was really tough for Mika. Like, this matchup up against Mars theoretically is pretty sound. It doesn't feel like they're getting the most out of it. Not playing. They're having a look at the Grimstroke again. Senior will go in. Hex is out from Boxy. They don't really change the stuns too well. And Pure will go back in on Tansania now, looking for the Vengeance. Seems as though he will have his way with it. Nice oh. turnaround as now GPK shows up. With a damage amp rune, there is no getting away from the monkey kick. That is a little bit miscalculated out from Liquid. Hex comes out, not enough mana for the Earth Spike, but not enough time to really channel the mana drain as well to get you to that point where you get the chain control. Good move out. It does force the rotation out from GPK, but with the Amplify damage, they're going to be able to find this top tier one. Again, start to replicate a little bit of what they did in game one as well. Start to invade the top area, pressure Mike as much as possible. 
and shrink the map down for Liquid. I mean, they've set themselves up for some good incursions on the mid as well. A good deep ward behind that tier one. So they can look to start playing a little bit of that shove with the Nether Blast at level three. They're lining up down bot just a bit. They've, they do have the control. Boxy, if they wanted to try on the night. They are going to give it a crack. They'll jump in onto the Mars with the Earth Spike again from Boxy. Going to save his Nightfall. Maybe going a little bit too far because now Insania has rotated oh. the arena. It's perfect from Saberlight right on the edge. And they pick up the kill onto Nightfall. Beautiful rotations up to the supports of Liquid. And Boxy's just everywhere at the right time. Coming in with a saving stun, preventing that instant pop to be comfy, preventing that burst. No Phantasm flying out. No. no Attempt at the play here from Nightfall to dodge out, just knowing that he'd rather probably just reset, go back to farm, and just try to catch up. The network just isn't there Boxy. for that safe lane. This time he might be too far, but Insania is there to back him up if necessary, and Metboom not feeling safe, though Nisha, he wants to go after GPK, trying to secure the power in. We'll miss out, a save will deny it off, but Nisha may just try to take his life. Meanwhile, Sableye shows up onto the Grimstroke now, still trying to chip away at Toronto and GPK. Okay, in they go, again onto Toronto, nobody's down yet though, Boxy, he'll secure oh. one, but they are trying to go move, move onto the line as they do lose save to boot, Boxy, he does finally go down, the issue is they cannot deal with the Monkey King, though maybe they can, the turnaround is here, GPK, he's still alone, in comes the CK, Knight pulls around to try and help out, but GPK, he's dropping a little bit too low, he needs to be faster, oh. GPK, gonna turn back around, and Saberlight, he's the one to go down, but Nisha will at least find the MK is now in goes the CK once again onto Insania, trying to find a little bit more value. It's Insania, oh, here come the TPs. Nightfall, Nightfall may have gone too far. Nisha, does he want to keep the fight going? Swashbuckle away, Nightfall. No. Oh, he's into the tier one tower. Do they have the disables from Boxy? Yes, they do. Oh, the finger yeah. out. Oh, Boxy flips him off on the way. Oh my, Bepboom trying to match the aggression from Liquid, but it's just not possible at the moment, it seems. That fight drags on for so long. Four for two in the trade. As the TP in comes in from Boxy, again, always, always at the right place at the right time. TP's in. Nisha drops the bottle to be refilled as well. So if need be, if that fight even went sideways for a moment, he'd have a little bit of mana to play with, a little bit of HP to balance out. They don't even need it. Liquid are just finding all of these advantages for themselves lining up. And Betboom, I do appreciate that they are trying to take this aggressive stance, right? Like last game, it felt like they started to idle around the 10 minute mark. They are still keeping that aggression going here. Oh, they got that blink. They can find at least Insania on the bench, but no, they're gonna try for Nisha. Swash away, not gonna be quite away though. Insania with a nice swap away. He's gonna give him a chance back alive. It's Pure now. Pure's the one in danger. Insania, he will drop it. Here come the rotations. Liquid, no, they will cancel. The TP away from the life stealer. Seeing the Stampede was committed, they do not want to continue as Nisha really playing with fire for this power rune. GPK, he'll oblige, but here comes Boxy with the Earth Spike out. He will hold down GPK. It's pure. Oh, Wukong's command committed. Soulbind now out as well, but here comes Sableye. Oh, it's a pure. They've got the arena no. down. Pure trapped up, but there's where's the damage? The Decrepify, it's going to keep the Centro alive as they'll move in onto the Grimstroke into Toronto. He's the one to go down. They will at least get pure out of it. They could have lost so much more on the side of Betboom. Again, they've got this good understanding of their timing. They've got this blink and pure. They feel the need to start playing around, using the vision that GPK can provide, along with the Inkswell combos you have on the Monkey and the Scent. But it's, it's constantly focusing on the mid where Liquid have the numbers anyway. They're not able to rotate outside that area. And this position, Boxy is just so quick with the reflexes. The moment the jumps in, it's just, you can't get anything out, and the forced out Wukongs, no one to hold, Pure had to be a little bit quicker. They have to connect as a unit to get this combination off. It's a pretty tough affair here for Boom, just never able to find the positive end of these trades. We are going to see another three-man smoke now from Liquid. Arena is down, but they won't seem to mind. They just still have the setup for the spear. Everyone going to leave the top area here from Boom. head down towards the south instead. If you are Liquid, you do have the opportunity to go through the Twin Gate, of course, and go to the opposite side of the map, but it seems as though Liquid, they're going to fight over this 14-minute Wisdom Room, perhaps. See if they can find an easy support kill. But boom, they have not sent anyone over. Instead, they're going to try and head over to the opposite side and find the opposing Wisdom Room. But Boxy's setting up. 
That's a nice ward. They've got plenty of vision. Here come the TPs. It's a trap. Oh. Liquid. They set it perfectly. Pure in so much trouble. Is now the arena. It comes out. Save a life. He blocks the exit. He has blocked the exit. Pure has no way out of the scenario. He is gone. Oh, no. What a trap set up by Boxy. I'll tell you, John, this, this lion, he knows what he's doing. This, this is just God tier gameplay coming out from Boxy. The vision set up, the fact that they ran down, they didn't see anyone. So Boxy got that idea, the coordination of Liquid to make that play across the map. Because they got the read. No one's down bot. Oh, it's perfect. They're just going to find it. And then the immediate just hex out onto the center, ensuring there was no stunt to fly in. I love the teamwork. They saved like He just blocks the way. Takes the easier kill, but knows that Pure just cannot escape the situation. And they end up with everything. They get the Wisdom Rune on both sides. They get the kills they want. Like, <laughs> everything's lining up. It's, it's a tough time for Bet Boom. The map is shrinking. The aggression's lining up from Liquid. They, they do keep going for these movements. Another smoke out. Like, they've got this really good idea. Again, they've got this control. They've got this damage. They just need to find the right targets. I mean, they're going to group up again. Bet Boom, they are not looking to retreat. They see Nisha on the Pango, oh. but Nisha has Insania right around the corner with the swap available. He could move in for the Pango. Nisha's still alive. Swap out from Insania will save the day. They'll Soulbind, but it's only Insania that's been caught, and they still haven't got the kill. They are still trying, and they will take it, but Insania, he won't mind. And Venge with a swap. Like, even at level one, it's, it's not the longest range. It's long enough. They're always in position. I love this read from Liquid. Insania's not leaving Nisha alone at all. And they're using him almost like bait, dragging his attention in there, dragging the attention bet boom onto him and just saving him in the end. Wasting time, allowing space to just farm up. Or Saberlight for Mika. Mika's been left untouched in this life sealer. You know, he hasn't joined in. He's got the Maelstrom. He's not going for the Radiance this game, which is appreciated, even though it would be effective to an extent with a CK. Top lane. Top lane. Bet boom is still trying to find a target and Mika. He is the big one. He'll jump in with the rage oh, himself. Oh, Nikkei oh, giving no chance no. as now this Giga Chat wanted to go for the 1v3 fight. And it's Bet Boom that run. They do not want it. Oh, man. Come at me, bro. At, at some point, you've got to look at these movements out from Bet Boom. Sit back. PK, not there. No. PK! Foxy! Uh oh. Foxy catches him again. Flips him off. Blink is up down the line, and GPK after the start he had in this game. What a disastrous scenario now for him. Oh man, it's starting to lag behind for Beth Boom. Again, they keep forcing these movements out. They don't really have forward wards. At this point, you take the smoke and just plant a ward somewhere. Go beyond, go into, they've got the triangle, they've got the top, but they need more. It's all defensive right now on the side of Beth Boom. Liquid. They're just baiting them in. They know I mean, that this lineup is just looking to play with Inks while Blink in and even dragging GPK. Like you are, you're getting decent space out for your CK. He's got Midas. He's going into the BKB. It lane. Zania was looking for a swap. Not gonna quite find it. He was able to get away. It's so tough again like you. You had this perfect start on GPK. You, you tell your team, listen guys, we can go. I am the strongest hero on the, on the, on the, the map. But it is now not the case. No. Not even, not even close. And again, this... For a Toronto. Monkey, yeah. Oh. yeah, he's gonna find out the hard way. Sableight's right around the corner. He's trying for a TP play <laughs> up, but there's just no chance. Tips in from Mickey. Toronto. Well, at least he's, you know, he's been offered a cheers here as Toronto's gonna go now. Oh, Boxy, not messing around. Tips up from Sableight. <laughs> That's your classic line pub right there. Absolutely. Kill Earth. secure, I believe, is the yeah. way they like to say it. Yeah, and you do it with style with the earth spike, not even the finger. You know, I, I, I've seen that a couple of times. It does happen. You know, Boxy is a worthwhile investment. There goes the Wraith Band. Okay. What's well, GPK, but GPK on the MK going to be a little bit too hard instead mid lane. Boxy with the mana trade out onto Pure. It's always just, it just makes me laugh at how much damage this stupid spell does now. Hey, what did I tell you about the level 25 talent? It's nice. Now it's default. Yeah. And your level 25 talent multiplies that by two. Apparently Icefrog thought it was nice as well, John. Is, oh, GPK. This could be oh, really bad. No, no, GPK, no, no. GPK, this could be really unnice. The Saberlight here. And GPK, he is down. The swap right back into the arena. He loses the Wukongs. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? It doesn't feel like you can do too much. You just split a Toronto, they are getting smothered. They are drowning oh, against Liquid. They're, they're 
just on top of Beth Boom every single step. The aggression's coming out from them. They've got the Siege coming in. They're playing so well with his tempo. And it's just down to how well that they utilize the map. You know, they, they just play off the back of Nisha. And Senya just hugs the guy. Just plays with another swap. Just gets that good position in the rear and ensures that none of those jumps panned out. Inside of Bet Boom. I mean, at some point, Nightfall will be ready to go. I mean, Echo, Sab Echo Saber is up. BKB is coming out next. I, I just don't know if that's enough at this point. It, it doesn't feel like it. Like, you're going to line that up with the damage out of Mike finally joining in. You've got the AoE clear anyway, to an extent, with a Pangolier. And you've always got Swap to save. Like, that's the big issue. They need to scout out this Venge or Lion. Honestly. Any, two, any one of these supports has got to go. Mid lane. Another group up from Liquid. Bet Boom doing the exact same thing. They've got vision around this area, so they'd love a fight if Liquid were to oblige. Nisha is going to get jumped. Pua going to try and initiate, but Boxy is there to save. A double stun with the Ink Swell, though. Nisha, he oh. may just get blown up. Bet Boom, they find the opening. Two down for Liquid. What can they get out of this? How can they capitalize here, Bet Boom? It's, it's still a fairly quick respawn. Their siege isn't the fastest as well outside of just spamming. With the, with the Nether Blast, they're just, they're just gonna sit back, farm up. They've got some good wards set up defensively. Again, they've got this good position on their bot jungle. Oh, you are not safe still, but a nice blink away. He's all right. Really playing on the edge here is pure. And it's a fantastic kill, just not an easy one to translate into an objective. It does set, it does balance the game out a little bit more for Bet Boom, of course. And that's the one moment Insania is just not next to Nisha. You know? The one time they're not sticking as a duo. They get that open. Bet Boom, they're gonna need to try to find more of that. If they if they can find a way to just keep Insania away with the saves, they do still have that burst. They do still have that mobility on hand. And that aggression can line up. BKBs are closing in for GPK as well. So more tools to play with. A side of Liquid. I mean, they, they, they just need to wait for their own BKB, honestly. Like they're getting it onto Saberlight. Ags being formed up by Nisha. So his output starts to get pretty damn big. Oh, it's such a close game anyway, though, right? Like, you, you, you put out these items, like, even the win probability right now is sitting at 59% here for Liquid. It, it's still anyone's game, and that seems to be the, the storyline of this best of three series. Like, even last game around, what was it, 52% mm. around this point? It's just, it's and ridiculous the fact that Bet Boom, even though they keep running at a brick wall, they're still so close when it comes to being against Liquid. Yeah, they're, they're, they're making it work to an extent. Yeah. It's also down to the fact that Liquid, despite finding some of these wins, haven't been able to exert that pressure on the map either. They take that tier 2 top, they haven't lined up for Roshan. You know, there is some, again, decent enough forward vision here from Betboom to watch one Roshan entrance, oh, although here we go. is fading. They've got the smoke up. They certainly do. BKB available in Nightfall. They want to try and get the surprise reveal off. Mickey's going to show on the bot wave, so they do know that there probably is a few heroes from Liquid around that area. And Pure, he's going to find a haste rune. That is the perfect rune for this initiation, if you can just find the right target. But I think you probably want Boxy. Mickey is a little bit too challenging when the support's right behind him, but they have the only, Mickey is the only one they really see here. So he will retreat. I'm still patiently waiting, but Liquid now going for the counter What's smoke. It was underneath vision of Bet Boom, so Bet Boom are very well aware. Keep in mind, GPK just bought his own BKB. Liquid, they'll head straight south towards the Roshan pit. Maybe this is where you force the fight. Do you start Roshan? Bet Boom, they're going to re-smoke. They want the fight real bad. I mean, these BKB timings are massive here for Bet Boom. This is such an awkward position. Tier 1 still holds, so Liquid can't scout My into goodness. that area. Oh, they're so close, they can smell each other now. They're just ring a ring a moat rosy here between these two teams. Save a oh. line, we're gonna jump in. GPK, he'll break the smoke. Save a line, he'll get an arena down, but the BKBs are out. GPK, dropping low, it. but he's all right. The soul mine is out now as they rush towards the Roshar pit. They need some defense, and it seems like for now, it's Pure. Pure's the one to get caught on the Centaur. He has been left behind. That's one down, and I believe for Liquid, it might just be... Oh, Ooh, never smoke. mind. Never mind, we're going again. I appreciate that. I, they found one, but it's not enough to be fully comfy. Response are short. They did force out pretty big spells. Soul binds down, Phantasm down for a little oh, bit. Oh, GPK, not no. him. Not GPK. He's gonna try and head towards the mid lane. Nisha has a blink oh. up and he's gonna find him. 
Nisha, he has spotted the primary target. GPK, can you get away from this scenario? I don't know if he can. He'll head to the tree line, but GPK gets oh, swapped out and oh, Liquid, oh. they have got the MK. GPK will try to man up, but it is no good. Toronto will also get caught. And Liquid now with three down. Pure will respawn. Save has also been caught. Pure is trying to rush open back. No, he's not. Save is gone. And Bepboom, they would try to split push the side lanes. So how do you stop Liquid? They're just such a strong unit now. It, it, it's, it's difficult. They need to find these supports on Bepboom. Right, that's where the success comes in. You kill off or immediately oh, control the both Foxy or Insania. They saw Pure. They know where the Centaur is. Saber Light hunting around. Arena up in one second. Pure, he knows something is a little bit awry. They will miss out for now. The Centaur is okay. <laughs> Walked right under the tier two. Light. Does he keep checking? That's the question. He's got arena up and pure. Oh! oh! Saber light. What a spin! Saber light. You monster! You has caught out and he is gone. Oh, I mean, sometimes you just gotta check into the mid lane. They go. They're on to the C key now. Night four. He will be KB and just get the hell away. Oh, oh the, the confidence, Jonathan. The confidence. Just casually chucking a spear down the tree line. Finds that freebie. Bet boom. I mean, he had no vision. Just oh, was, that's oh, oh, th God. This is cinema. This is cinema this, right here. It's Kino. It's Kino right there. He's finding it. Not and playing. Oh. Not playing. GPK got spotted there for a second. Insania trying oh, to chase him down. He'll hide as a tree. Yeah, I would make the same face if I was in that position. GPK. He's okay. In fact, they're going to group up again. Bet Boom, they are not done fighting. It is a very bloody game number two between these two teams. It seems like they are going to retreat for now. Only Toronto Tokyo will stick around. Roshan is still up and Mikkei will get started. They're in a good position for the side of Bet Boom. They wanted to contest. They've got the Wukongs ready. BKBs are back up. They'll try with a smoke out. I think you have to try. They I need to find the trucks. They need to rip Boxy or Insania apart, and then just go from there. And they make it in time. Bepboom desperately trying to get there within the Roshan's lifespan, but Roshan is down. Do they keep going for the fight? GPK will get some vision. Saberlight looking around for the Monkey King. Will pop his BKB pure. Going a little bit too far. Does get caught by the spear, though. Pure will be okay for now. Instead, Nisha, he's getting chased down, but there's not enough damage. GPK in the middle of all this will pop the Wukongs. The swap out from Insania as Box is going to go down to Toronto. He will closely follow as now Nisha. He will control up the MK. Meanwhile, Sableye deals with save on the partner. GPK has still been left behind. Nisha, he will just man up. It's a 1v1, but no. Pure's going to interrupt, oh! but here comes Sableye. Here he comes. Pure, he will BKB and run back towards the Roshan pit, but there is no running. There is no running. Sableye finding another. Bepboom may have lost four and Team Liquid. They can just go straight through the top lane, it seems. This is the opening for Liquid. Bepboom could have had such a good position, but that read from Sableye dives away from the Monkey King's entrance, ensuring that he was still going to find the back lane. They isolate Pures right off the back. And again, it falls apart for Bepboom when you can't find the back lane here. The swap comes in, the stuns come out, your BKBs don't go on right when you decide to jump in. And Liquid, if they translate that age sure, it, it disappears. No more secondary life for Nisha. But you're in a you're in a strong position now to just take control. Start to look at the high ground. One last outer tower left here for Bet Boom as well on the mid, a much safer target. You've got the full Mjolnir up and ready now on Mika and <laughs> Boxy's on the hunt. He's got the triple Wraith Bands. Uh-oh, here we go. He can't die. Insania will give the vision Nightfall. He does not want to bar of it. He just wants to leave. In no. comes Boxy. Oh. They've got the Lion Hex out, and now they've got Mika to follow up with the damage, and Nightfall just melts. He's just gone. Save a line. Oh. Whoopsie daisies. I mean, it won't really matter anyway. There's one hero down, and that's the CK. It's like, how do you defend what well, seems like Liquid? They're going to go for kills instead of pushing the tier three tower. They are lacking a creep wave anyway. Might as well take care of mid, perhaps, to save for bet. Responser is still fairly short at this point in the game. And just get this forward vision. They've got good wards watching that bot jungle. Both entrances on the old jungle and the new jungle area. And again, very secure. So much damage from coming out from Mika. So much durability on Boxy. Legitimately, this triple rate ban plus Blink plus the shard. No one's jumping him in the back line. You're jumping in with BKB. Oh, JPK! He's all right. 
He's all right. Tableite has used his blink, so the chase is going to be a little bit rough. PK, it'll be fine. He's a kobold now, Jonathan. He's just a happy kobold. <laughs> Yeah, just trying to do what he can. To... Is he happy though? I don't. I don't know how Sable, happy. Sable lights come. GPK, it's not safe. Get in the trees, sir. Get out, GPK. Uh... I, you've got to be careful, GPK. Oh! Oh! The hex comes out. Foxy's got him. Oh, with the finger there, GPK. He's gonna be forced to BKB and fight. Wukong's command is committed. He'll try it for Boxy, but he's trying to replay instead. GPK is down. <laughs> Mamma mia. Mamma mia. The triple. Quarter quadruple rate bands on Boxy. How do you kill him? Out. He, he just doesn't die. He's unkillable. Now, imagine if that was two plate meals on. Oh, don't say that, John. Don't say that. It's one sided enough. Save the life. He'll go for the BKB. He'll run. Save. Try to drain him up. He'll take one oh, down. This could be the fight, but no. The uh, spike. It will connect on Super Insania. He will still drop his Mickey. He wants blood and he smells it in the water. Pure as down. Can they find Nightfall in the CK? Nisha, he'll have a look around, but Nightfall is in business. It seems as though he will be okay as Nisha. Playing some pinball in the Radiant Jungle? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Taking a diversion for a little bit. Massive streak to find on Saberlight. So despite dropping a lot of heroes, you're still going to be happy on Bethlehem to at least get that piece of activity out of the way here with that pickup. Onto Nightfall as well. The one here that would really use that farm is working his way into the full Silver Edge. His career has passed away, but he'll have the gold. He still has some decent access into his secret shop at the least, so you will have that option up and running. This vision game from Liquid, though, it still stands. Like, these forward wards just tells them every single time where the side of Bat Boom is, and it just allows them to make a play. Look at Nisha. Mika already grouped up. They saw that farm down bought for Nightfall. They want to hunt. It's no breathing room here for Bat Boom. They're, they're trying their best to secure some farm here on the CK, but just Nothing is really coming his way. He's almost at the Silver Edge timing at least, so you do have a bit of damage flying out, but... Just not, no items have really seemed to make the big difference that Bepuma are looking for. Like, it's been non-stop fighting this whole game, and just... It liquid, they seem to continuously come out on top. Now sitting at this 4K net, 14k net worth advantage. See if Bepuma can find the one team fight they need to, to maybe stick this game back around. And this game doesn't simplify for Bethlehem as it goes on either. You've got some great scaling with the CK, with the Monkey King, of course. But you have so much utility coming in from the side of Liquid. Just Max Nether Swap, the, the talent spikes that Venge gets. It's they impressive. The creep wave. Is, is the creep wave too enticing? The Liquid are on the high ground. They will show on the wall. They won't matter. They're boom, they know they're there. You are still going to bait them in. Boxy will miss out. On the Earth Spike, Nisha, right behind him, ready with the Rolling Thunder. Boxy, praying they jump in. He's got full Wraith Bats. He yep. cannot die. Can't die. This lion is unkillable right now. Yeah, I love this build. And he, he got a Craggy Coat. <laughs> oh my god. Perfection. <laughs> Who needs oh, a play no. now? Into the oh, GPK. Oh no. Here they go into the high ground. Team Lick or Pure. That's a big start. But where's the damage out? Pure, still going on a Mickey. Mickey is gone. Liquid, maybe they do go too far, but here comes Foxy. Look at the mana drain. Look at the arena. Save life. He will not allow them to escape. Nightfall, he might have no choice but to fight this one out. He'll move up to Nisha, but save a life. Move him back in. It's Nightfall, he is not safe. There is no mana available. Save a life. What a giga chat. Still going. We'll run into the tier 4 towers. He will chase him down. Save life will finally go. Meanwhile, Boxy, the unkillable lion. Look at that, John. Look at the mana drain. Look at the peak Dota gameplay. Uh, they, they finally do take him out. It cost a lot there for Bethlehem. Three buybacks to hold on to that top area. And you, it's just so difficult. In a prolonged fight up against this line with Mana Drain, you jump in, he just instantly has spell immunity. You can't stun him up. He's going to get the angle to oh, get the hex. He's going to get the angle for the Earth Spike. And he's just going to sustain his entire team. Like that, that was a rough one. Oh, GP, he's... You know, this guy destroys the laning stage and then it just doesn't matter at the end. Just all of it gets thrown back the other way. It props to Bepboom. They are still trying their absolute best to fight. And you saw in the Rosha of rather this team fight, Mickey does go down, but well, Boxy turns right back around with the Mana Train. <laughs> Save light with the perfect arena. And even though Bepboom, they still manage to capitalize later on. I, I think Liquid is still pretty happy with the fight. Though it is still very, very even between these two teams. That it is. It's an opening for the side of Bethlehem, but they have to get something done with these buybacks. Roshan still half a minute away, and that's going to be the safest bet for them. They need that Rosh. They've committed way too much buying back to defend a high ground. Oh, Mickey. 
Mike, uh, that, that's a big target. If they see him north, they might be able to catch the life stealer. He's going to show up on the creep wave. This could be a prime opportunity if Bet Boom can find the initiation, but they're wrapping around the other way. Nisha, he'll break the smoke. In they go. Pure, he'll drop Saber Light. He'll try to blow up the Mars. Saber Light, though, he's a tanky, tanky boy. And now the swap comes out with the infest. Saber Light, he'll survive another day. Insania, he saved the day. And Mighty Ball is gone. Oh. Mighty Ball is gone. That's a full teamwork for Liquid. Just swept across. Oh, the my way. goodness. Just Dumped. Oh, just, just nothing's working. Nothing's working for Bebu. It's just too much. The response from Liquid. Again, there's no in buyback. Position. No buybacks. There's no buyback. The high ground. Liquid. Can they just end? Uh, maybe they can. Maybe they can go for the GG push. We'll see how confident they are. I mean, they don't really have that much damage, surely. They should at least be able to get away with two Raxes. In they go. 53 Tower is gone. They'll go for the Rax. They want the safer play. The glyphs are still available. Keep in mind, you've still got Arena up after that team fight. So this defense, if Liquid stick around and push for the Megas, it could still be a very, very dangerous fight for Bepu if they get caught. DKBs will still be unavailable for about 30 seconds here for the CK, so he has to be ultra careful. Same for Pure, he will not have it for another 20. Onto the bot racks they go. They'll go for the secondary. Bepu slowly respawning. They need about five seconds for everyone to be back up. The question is, will Liquid stick? Are they going to commit for the GG push? Big game. It's looking confident. Sableye going to jump in. Has found the Grimstroke save. In trouble. Toronto trying to save the day, but the arena is going to be down. Pure looks for an end this team fight. They'll get the Wukongs off GPK. He might be able to defend. Sableye still surviving. Does go down to Pure in Toronto. That's a good start here for the side of Beth Boom. Liquid, they are not done yet though. They want more. They'll find Nightfall. They'll find Toronto. They'll find GPK oh. and GG is called. GG is called Liquid. And...